Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hotbox. My name is Matt McSweeney. I am joined by Ty Capone, fresh off of the UFC 295 extravaganza from Madison Square Garden. Ty's boy 45 is in the building. Uh, Tucker Carlson, Kid Rock. I mean, they made they came out like they had a WWE entrance. It was uh, quite a night. And, and then there was the fights. But uh, Ty, did you enjoy the show? How you doing? I I heard you were feeling a little bit under the weather, but I know you are a war. You have a warrior mentality similar to that of Poetan, and that's why you are here today. Yeah, I uh, I feel like somebody tried drowning me in a random lake somewhere in Brazil. Nice, like uh, shout out to like Alex and like uh, Alex and Glover do to each other. But <clears throat> yeah, hopefully I don't sound like I'm on the precipice of death. I feel better, my body body wise. Big game. Coming up this week, I will be in attendance there you once go. I buy this flight that I still haven't bought. Um, for the birds, that is. And uh, Taylor Swift won't be there, so we're, we're getting this dub. We're bringing this dub home. I'm taking Eagles money line right now, just saying. Um, I love it. Sixers are looking good. Yeah. I'm happy about that. I, I can't. We, we can go into that deeper later this week, but I, I know there's just all smiles from me and you. We're happy. We're on the up and up. Hell Nothing yeah. can go wrong right now in the NBA, right? No, of course not. Just, um, just a, one of your players <laughs> getting hit by a car. But other than that, <laughs> that's crazy. By the way, absolutely. I, I want to know how. I want to know the context of that. But also, uh, great night of fights. Great night of fight. The whole main card just ending early. I mean, dude, getting the getting the co-main event before midnight is just like great. I love when that happens. It doesn't happen often, but um, and they, yeah, things went our way uh, more so than not. Definitely in the main event. Definitely in the main event. Let's just get right into it. Let's not let's not make these people wait much longer. UFC 295, like we said, from Madison Square Garden. We had all 13 fights, Ty. We didn't get anything to drop off or anything similar to last week where we had two fights drop out due to wait, and then Petrosian got sick the night of the fight, which is pretty wild. But we had Alex Bajeda and Yuri Prohoshka, and Poetan got it done, dude. Uh, it kind of in a similar fashion to how we thought it was going to happen, but I guess you can never really predict and know how this is how these things go down. That left hook, man, has been money for Alex Pereira throughout his entire career, and it, it made him some more money. He becomes a two weight class champion, not dual champion, but a two time and one once in eighty five, once in two hundred five. He takes out the former king of that weight class because. Yuri was technically the rightful owner of the belt before Jamal, you know, fought for the interim. Uh, and I, now it looks like Jamal's saying the crown's over here and all that nonsense. But I guess I'd like to hear what your thoughts were. I mean, the, the walkouts were incredible. The, I, I expected that. And the fight itself, it kind of went how I thought it would. I I, I, I felt good when uh, when I was able when we were seeing uh, Alex taking some of the shots that he was taking. Yuri. His striking is very unorthodox. It comes from all these different angles. He is quick. He was landing, you know, not terribly hard, but he was landing. And Alex was able to not, didn't really show any of the effects of it. Never really got wobbled or anything like that. He just, he kept marching forward, backing up, marching forward. They just, this was a very good fight. And I think Yuri thought he had him hurt at, at, towards that last uh, finishing sequence. He hit him a couple times. Followed him in, similar to the way Alex kind of followed in uh, Izzy when he got knocked out. And he just got caught with that, you know, in tight boxing, just that one, you know, that right hand into that check left hook. And it dropped him, tried to go for that takedown, those Johnny Walker elbows, and it got him out of there. Did you like the stoppage? Uh, or and I'd just like to hear your thoughts overall on the entire contest. But shout out to Poetan, my boy. Our boy. Our no. boy, I should say. I just can't, yeah. Um, yeah, I am fine with the stoppage. The fact that Yuri said Mark Goddard was right in a very odd, cryptic post-fight uh, video. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I, I, I uh, turned I it off the, about 20 seconds in. <laughs> it was uh, it was backstage. He was just like, the camera was facing him, and he like, <laughs> it was like a minute long, and he talked like every 10 seconds, and then just like had this like look of sadness and also like scariness. 
Uh, it was weird, but he said Mark Goddard was right. And yeah, I thought, you know, he was, there, there was like 13 punches and then turned into elbows that a couple of those elbows, when they started landing behind the ear, he lost his grip on Poetan against the cage and fell backwards. He was, he, he was out. Yeah. He was out. And, uh, Mark Goddard stepped right in. And if Mark Goddard did, did not step in, I think, uh, you're probably be in the hospital right now. So I think he did him a favor as soon as he got, he, he got right back up, but he did not look good at all. <laughs> his body language, his eyes, he didn't look good. So right away I saw everyone say it was a bad stop, which I was just honestly very confused. I, yeah. I don't know how, you know, I, I didn't think it was that bad. It, it's just a main event. People want to see people go to sleep. And I, I just don't, I don't agree with that at all. I'm sorry, but, um, Real quick trivia time. Do you know Alex Pereira is the ninth double champ in UFC history? Do you know the other eight? Uh, just people who've won belts in two different weight classes. Is that yeah? Uh, so I mean DC, Henry DC, Cejudo, yep. yep, Amanda Nunes. That's three. Conor McGregor. That's four. Uh, John Jones. That's five. Uh, GSP. That's six. Um, these last two are gonna be hard because they they happened so long ago, and I mean we we're watching you know the whole career of Jay Collier and Martin Budai, so it's hard to f- remember uh, some Frankie things. Frankie Edgar, close. He went for it. Uh, uh, BJ Penn, boom. That's seven. And what? Uh, Randy Couture. Like, oh, got it all. Oh, hey, look at you, Money oh. Matt. How about Money it, baby? I'm, I still got it, man. My brain is still there. <laughs> It's still there. We, we don't have long, but it, you know, while we have it, let's let's try to take advantage of it. So Alex is, um, I guess he became the thirty third to attempt to go for it, and he became the ninth to do it. I mean, look, listen to all those names you named. That's eight Hall of Famers. Yeah, that's eight of the best to ever do it. Um, and Alex is right there with him, and that, that's some good company to keep. And look, some of the guys that uh, went for it and didn't get it, that he, you know, was able to do something they didn't do. I mean. RDA, Max Holloway, Izzy. Frankie, Pettis, Volk, Izzy, TJ, Leona Machida, Vitor Belfort. None of them could do it, and he did. It's just a crazy, you know, he has he had some favorable matchmaking? Yeah, he hasn't really fought any wrestlers. Um, but his wrestling has improved, right? He was able to get up when Yuri took yeah. him down. Um, I also thought he won round one. Every judge gave it to Yuri, I guess because of the takedown and the control. But before that, Alex was knocked him down with a light kick a minute in and just chewed up. Those legs, and it only took a couple kicks. Yeah. Shoot them up, and I thought—I mean, damage outweighs control time by the rules, right? So I thought what he did was better. Uh, the refs had the refs had a rough night in general. We'll get to that in later, later in some of these fights. But um, yeah, I mean, what more can you say about about Alex Pereira? He just came to the sport just a couple years ago, double champ, calls out Adesanya, awesome, which I kind of kind of love it. I mean, you know, I, Jamal Hill's right there. That's cool. But I think Jamal Hill also still has some recover, recovery time. Like, a torn Achilles, uh, unless you're Aaron Rodgers, which, you know, maybe he didn't even tear his Achilles. I hear, I hear, all, the, are, right? I hear, I hear all the fucking conspiracy which theories. Which I'm, but... I'm completely into, because there's no way that motherfucker at, you know, 40 or whatever he is, is coming back mid to December. But, hey, we'll see, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know where Jamal Hill is in his recovery time. He should be next up for sure. But if there's any kind of, you know, if he can't come back by April, which is when UFC 300, I think, is going to be, how about Adesani Pereira 3 or 5, if you will? Yeah. Um, pretty much the, 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 the finale of this trilogy, MMA trilogy, and just this insane rivalry and in mixed martial art combat sports. Um, I'm all in for that. I know Izzy said he wanted to take some time off, and he probably should. He's, he fought so much. Um, but I don't know, man. That that would be, you know, they'd have to give Izzy a lot of money. I'm sure, like five mil plus or something like that. But dude, three hundred. Put that in Vegas. That 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 would be awesome. I know they want to kind of roll out the red carpet for three hundred. I think that's like the, the you know the plan, right? I think they wanted to get John John on that or Connor or somebody. They got to have a big time name. It's got it's got to be Connor. They, we we I mean we Connor headlining with like uh, Pereira Izzy two. Or three, I should say, or five, yeah. <laughs> or ten, fifteen. Um, with that as the co-main, and then like a, an insane feature about that we just like, you know, don't know what we could, what it could even be right now, but it just it just develops. I mean, that that's got to be their plan, right? Brock Lesnar versus Jake Collier. 
Uh, I mean, <laughs> Brock Lesnar, Mark Hunt rematch. Yeah, Mark Hunt. Just get him out of the nursing home to have bring him in here. But no, I, I mean, it, it seems like that that was already the discussion a little bit that they were kind of angling towards that. Like you, like we'll talk about Aspinall, but people were saying Aspinall Stipe and, and fucking for three at three hundred, which I don't really know if that makes any sense, but. It's, Did you see Stipe when they showed him? He looked like he couldn't walk. I, dude, I don't know if that's we just were how saying he walks. That at, at my buddy's house. We were watching <laughs> that. We were like, "Oh my god, look at him, dude!" Like, it, it looks like bad. an old defensive lineman walking in there. Like, it looked like Robert. His wife Quinn. looked good, but he. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Robert. Yeah, dude. I mean, he is like in his mid forties, which I completely forgot about that he's like forty three, turning forty four soon. I think, or maybe forty two, forty three. But yeah, that didn't look good. And him and John are still talking about they. You know, they're only really fighting each other. And, People keep saying, "Oh, John Jones, your legacy is not complete until you fight Tom Aspinall." I'm like, "All right, let, let's let's calm down." I Relax. think John Jones' legacy has been cemented. He's good when, when he slung Leo Machida's dead corpse on the cage. Um, but yeah, um, kind of forget where we were at. So I'm gonna have to, we were just have talking, you redirect me. talking all the light heavyweight and all the 300 uh, nonsense that is going to be coming around because that seems like the big topic of conversation what the main event for 300 is going to be i imagine around christmas we'll find out that it's yeah it has to absolutely. be connor though like it, it, it con- i did say this if it's not connor i don't think he's ever coming back to fight it's at that so i point. guess yeah i guess the, the original plan was connor to come back in december but now i think in december is when they're gonna drop the connor news yeah that's right because they had to push it back a little bit i'm assuming he's he's gonna be returning to 100 percent health i mean uh, I don't I don't follow him on social media, so I don't know how active he's been. I don't know if he's going out and partying, but when he he's is. in, uh, you know, okay, I was going to say, if he's in zero dark 30 mode, that could be dangerous. But when he comes back, we're, we're, we're absolutely fading him. We fade guys coming off of long layoffs. That's what we do. Yuri Prohaska came off a long layoff. And what do we always say, or what was I trying to say um, that he wants to do? He wants to get knocked out. That's what Yuri wants. He just try. He, it's just how he fights. It seems like that's what he wants to happen. And that's exactly what happened in that fight. So, shout out to Poetan for uh, doing something not many people have done. And also, I'm going to ask you this. I know it sounds crazy, but is Alex Pereira a UFC Hall of Famer? I think yeah. I, I don't it think is to get into the Hall of Fame. No, like I don't think it's really even that that hard anymore. It, it's when you do when you do what he's done, you, you can argue the whole strength of schedule and oh well, he didn't fight a wrestler or this or that, whatever. The guy gets up and knocks people out. He got taken down in this fight. People thought that that was just going to be rinse, repeat. The people who thought Yuri was going to win thought that that was going to be the constant thought process or what was going to happen. Alex looked very uh, controlled on the ground and was not really bothered by the situation. He kind of just, you know, held his own and then eventually was able to find a little opportunity to get back up. And he got back up and he knocked the man out. He has beaten a you know a list of names. I know the Sean Strickland win at the time didn't really matter you know all that much uh, in theory. But guess what? That guy's the middleweight champion. He knocked him out yep. in one round. Izzy Clean. came from behind, knocked him out in the fifth round. You know he loses to Izzy, which is you know uh, that would that was that's a tough one. But Izzy's also one of the greatest of all time. Jan Blahovich, former champion, wins the decision against him. Now Yuri, former champion. He's he's fighting all former champions now. So it's – and he's yep. like, a what, 11 fights in? And he's a two-time, you know, a, a two-different weight class champion? It, you cannot hold it against this man. And, and is Brock Lesnar a Hall of Famer? Uh, I mean, you know, he didn't fight often, but the guys he fought were hammers, and he fucking smoked all of them, except for Kane. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's 5-3. and three. You know, so it's like I don't think it. I, mean, I don't think it really matters all that much. It's no, no, and and if you look at some Hall of Famers and some people who have gotten into the Hall of Fame, UFC, it's not as uh, strict as the MLB. I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, you definitely uh, can say that. Um, also, how insane was the whole build up, the stare downs, the walkouts? Awesome. dude. That's the stare down was insane. I mean, you have Bruce Buffer uh, talking about Call of Duty, Modern Warfare Three, and then New Amsterdam Vodka. Meanwhile, these two are just staring at each other through each other's souls. The, uh, the camera we were angles like, were incredible from like behind the shoulder. They were. I loved it. I loved it. I wish we got more of that. Um, my roommate went to bet on Yuri once I told him about the uh, darkness retreat he went yeah. on. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm betting that guy. I'm like, no, no, you shouldn't. Long layoff, shoulder surgery, Alex Pereira is just, is just as much as just as scary as 
year he is, you know, in theory, maybe even more, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then once he saw the walkout, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm betting this guy. So I uh, love the walkout, love the little arrow he does in the yell three punch combo. Um, that's our boy, man. One of our, one of the I, I just, saints, man. He really is one of the best. It's hard not to say he's not one of the best combat sports athletes ever for what he did in kickboxing and then MMA at the highest of the high levels, K1 and UFC, and beating some of the guys he's beaten. I mean, insane. And he's, he's still not done. Like he, I could see him put Jamal Hill out. You know, I think Absolutely. Jamal Hill might have the advantage in that fight. But guess what? Jamal Hill is also coming off of a bad injury. A long layoff. Jamal Hill's not that young. I, I, you know, he's not 36 like Pereira is, but I think he's 31, 32. So all that time off is going to hurt. I think he's quicker, better athlete. You know, Alex's striking defense is, is, is what always concerns me. You know, he kind of doesn't really block. He yeah. just kind of has his hands up and moves his head. Sometimes he moves well. Uh, it's kind of like that kickboxing defense. But he gets hit. He gets hit a lot. I mean, I, I thought... DC was overhyping it. I didn't think he was hurt when he started hitting him a couple times before the knockout. Yeah, I didn't and then think um, there was a couple times Yuri thought he had him hurt the first time, and then the second time he rushed in and boom, just quick. Not even like the hardest shot Alex could have landed with the left uh, before the right, after the right, but it put him out. It put him down. His face. I mean, he was wearing it. He was wearing the damage on his body uh, very quickly. Yeah, so that just shows how unforgiving Alex Pereira is. Uh, with his strikes. And I guess we will see what they do with him next. It seems like it's either a Jamal Hill or Izzy, if Izzy were to Mm -hmm. want to come back and and fight right away. But it it, it was, it kind of, it just, it feels good when you predict a fight like this and it goes exactly the way you kind of expected it to like the, the knockout and just getting Yuri out of there it's it was picture it was picture perfect, man. And and, and for Yuri, he's he's nowhere near like done necessarily. It's kind of he's kind of just got to get back up, you know, get back on the horse. He's only thirty one years old, so he could fight pretty much anyone at two hundred five and 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 honestly get a rematch because I think they would love to sell that rematch again if they were able to do it in time. I know uh, Magomed Ankalaev probably would have a argument for you know wanting to get in there and fight. Uh, the the champion soon, but he's got to get through Johnny Walker. Apparently, that's been made for January. Sometime in January, they are going to fight. So, love it. Run we, it back. We shall see. Uh, it's kind of just light heavyweights, a little bit in a holding pattern right now due to Jamal Hill being out and everything. So, I guess we shall see. But I, I, I that that was the perfect. I, I know the John losing John Jones and Stipe was rough, but they could not have capped the night off any better than having those two get in there and just the representation of mixed martial arts being these two Love psychotic it. warriors uh is exactly what i wanted and, and it was it, it lived up to the hype so something else that you know it, it, it this kind of went exactly how it could have and should have uh, gone tom aspinall catches sergey pavlovich right on that temple and rocked his world with a right hand got him to the ground and finished him in under two minutes, under a minute and a half, under a minute and 10 seconds. 109 is all it took Tom Aspinall to get Sergey Pavlovich the fuck out of there. And uh, listen, this this was kind of, um, we should have just bet the under, which uh, yeah. is really what I should have bet because I, I had Pavlovich TKO. You had Aspinall inside the distance. We didn't know how it was going to go, whether a lot of people said it was going to be Aspinall taking him down. You said a lot of people I was watching the fights with thought that that was going to happen. And I thought Pavlovich was going to, you know, knock him out on the feet. Pavlovich landed a couple good shots in, in the short time that the yep. fight was going on. This kind of just seemed like somebody was going to go to sleep. And it happened to be Sergey. Sergey did not take it. I mean, let's see, it might have been just a situation where he got hit on the right, you know, the right side. And it was just didn't take that shot very well. Doesn't seem like a guy who takes a punch very well. Uh, and, yeah. and I know at heavyweight, that's not a uh, it's it's not an easy thing to say because you're, it's like getting hit with a fucking sledgehammer uh, at that weight class. But good win for your boy Tommy Aspinall. He is the new UFC interim heavyweight champion. I, I don't. I am still struggling with this whole interim thing. He's basically the champion. But I guess I ask you, Ty, how did how did it make you feel to watch your boy re- uh, claim his title? Yeah, one uh, one shot is all Sergey Pavlovich landed the whole fight, but it hurt. It, it was a big one. He kept trying to land that right hand, and he landed the right hook. Uh, hit hit Tom Aswell, and it 
you know, he, he noticed it, it kind of woke him up and he was like, all right, it's time for me to get into my, uh, my boxing zone, I guess. And then he did, <laughs> yeah. right. It's like that, that punch that, you know, he, he needed to feel his power. He felt it. And then he, um, he gave him some of his and, uh, Sergey couldn't take it. I did a perfect shot, you know, left hook straight, right. Just boom, boom. I mean, how fast are his hands? How fast does he move? How well does he move? For he was at two. He was the heavier man in this fight. He's the bigger guy. Yeah. Like, you know, people talk about how big Pavlovich is, and you know, he has just long, long arms. But dude, Tom Aspinall, DC, I, I forget who it was. I think it was either Anik or DC said when they uh, when they met up, met with him in fighter meetings, they they couldn't real like they couldn't uh, understand how big he was. He was just much bigger than they even knew, and they had you know obviously seen him so many times before, so. He's just, yeah, he looked a lot bigger in there, like good big too. Like, you know, when you're in 265, I'm sure they probably, I'm sure he's more than, more than that, uh, the, the day after, but he's, he's in really good shape, yeah, really good shape. And he, he still moves well, you know, kind of like uh, a better version, I think of Cyril Ghosn, uh, more boxing instead of kickboxing. And, uh, yeah, it's me. I mean, with this ground, how good he is on the ground, it's gonna be tough to beat this guy. I think he has a pretty solid chin. I really don't like how he how he moves backwards sometimes. Like there was times Pavlovich was trying to chase him down. He just, you know, moving his Going head straight back, back straight. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Oh Christ, if you get hit, man, you're, you're going down, uh, Anderson Silva style. So th- that's a concern, obviously, but it's heavyweight. You got, you have concerns everywhere. I mean, Pavlovich could have won this belt and he has red flags pretty much everywhere in his game. You know, um, I, you know, I, how long is he going to be the interim champ for? Cause you know, John Jones just got this surgery. He's going to be out for a long time. Um, uh, yeah, like Pavlovich is ready to go, or Asmol's ready to go, probably in a in a month or two or three. So you just have him fight Stipe for the for the, like. What do you do here? I don't I don't understand what you do next with that interim tag, like you said. I, I I mean, unfortunately, I think if he wants to keep fighting, and he, I guess if they're going to defend the interim title, which is a wild concept, <laughs> that can't be a thing. I, I it doesn't it doesn't seem like it should be, but I guess it's going to be him and Cyril gone would probably be the next logical step, right? I mean, Cyril 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 Gons is still number one ranked. He's coming off of a decimation of, I believe that was Spivak, right? Uh, Not all that long ago, sometime in the summer. So uh, would that be next? I I don't know if uh, Cyril Gons... It seems you can make that fight soon, too. Yeah, and Cyril Gons doesn't have anything lined up right now, does he? No. No, no. so I think he's probably hanging around waiting for a situation just like this. You could do that at 300, uh, kind of on the undercard, because it wouldn't... You wouldn't be something you'd main event the biggest, you know, right. the biggest fight card ever. Basically, is what this is going to wind up uh, being promoted as. But hey, man, uh, uh, what a win for Tom Aspinall! And like, like you said, it kind of just solidified all those things that maybe any doubt that I had. The reason I was betting Pavlovich has kind of been, uh, you know, a little cold water has been thrown on that because Aspinall. Maybe the one thing I said was he couldn't be able to take the shot that Pavlovich. Pavlovich hit him pretty hard, and he ate, he ate it. And like you said, maybe going backwards, going straight back, isn't the right answer, but it worked. And his quickness and his able his ability to kind of get out of that danger zone very quickly, and then get back into it to get his own offense off is really dangerous at two uh, at the weight that he's at, two hundred and sixty pound man. Moving the way that he does, we said it on the podcast before that he moves like kind of a middleweight, and he he's explosive. His ground game is nasty. He you know took care of Volkov like he was a child. I don't know who's beating this guy now. It, it is at that point where it, it was one of them. I have to see it first to believe it, and I, and I believe it now. He put Sergey Pavlovich to sleep, and uh, now Tom Aspinall he's reigning above the heavyweights. Tom, do you think he beat John Jones? Um, man, yeah, I mean, you know, John would be coming off of, you know, a pretty big surgery at a pretty old age with a lot of mileage. I know it's John Jones and like, I don't know, man, <laughs> Tom Aswell is probably bigger, uh, quicker. I mean, I, I don't know if he's better than John on the ground. I, I would say he's not, but I, I would assume he's pretty, I mean, he is pretty good. I, I We know he's good. He's a black belt. Um, his boxing's better. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I would favor Tom Aspen over John Jones coming off of a you know peck, torn peck at his age. I know it sounds crazy, like Cyril Gaon Part Two, where I don't know why I bet on Cyril Gaon in that fight. But I remember that. I I think yeah, I think you have to favor Aspen, right? I, I, I mean, do you think John's wrestling, uh, offensive wrestling, is that much better than Tom's defensive wrestling? Maybe, maybe I know we know how good Tom is offensively, 
on the ground submission wise and wrestling wise. But what about defensively? What if somebody, you know, out wrestles him? What if he gets a matchup with Jelton Almeida or John Jones? Does, is that a possibility to expose Asimov's defense? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we've seen him ever really get tested by somebody at a high level like John. So that would be interesting. They're both, they're both really smart too. That's the thing about Tom. He, he, he's just a smart guy and he executes his game plan well. Um, so is John. So that would be, that would be probably the, the heavyweight fight to make, obviously. But now there's a big, big hold up. I would, I'd pick Aspinall just based off the fact that his age, the age that John Jones is at, like you said, all that mileage and everything. And the fact that Tom is such a large human being. I, I, have trouble believing that he would be able to take him down. I mean, obviously, Cyril Gaon and uh, Tom Aspinall, we can all agree, have different wrestling and grappling uh, you know, backgrounds or games. So it would not exactly look the way it did in the first John Jones heavyweight fight. Uh, but it wouldn't be an easy pick. This would, I feel like the line would probably be John Jones like minus 140, 150. And yeah. I would be hammering Aspinall money line just because the value's there. I mean, if it was on the other side, I might even bet John Jones money line. Cause you never get <laughs> you never get John Jones at an underdog number like that. So uh, that would be awesome. I I don't think that's going to happen. I think John is me at Steep A and done. Uh, yeah. I, I don't see. I really don't see the point in coming back from a pec injury like this and fighting one time. But I'm also not a fighter, so I, I you know I I can see why he would, he would just you know well nah, I'm okay I'm all right. Um, I, I could see why he just kind of wants to get that legacy fight sort of out of the way, but really, the more time that goes on, Ty, does that fight even really get you going? You know, I mean, it barely was. No, we barely were excited. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah. John Aspinall is a is a is a really tough, tough, tough fight to 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 predict because of the wrestling. A stand up, John's in trouble if he stays on the feet. I think Tom's just moves better. Um, he might be he might be the more naturally bigger guy and quicker, you know, having a hand speed advantage, having just a speed advantage in general will give John a lot of problems on the, on the feet. But could John get him down that quickly? You know, what if he can't get him down? Yeah. What if John's, you know, if John kicks him in the head and we're like, okay, DC part two, like what the fuck? So I think that'd be an interesting, interesting fight. Put that with Connor and uh, Nate, right? Connor, Nate, run that back. There you go. Run it all back. (laughs) DC and Jones one more time for the legacy. Now, uh, so that that's that. Uh, let's keep it moving. Jessica Andrade. This one, it, it did not go the way that the books thought it was going to go, and did not go the way I guess we thought it was going to go. But Mackenzie Dern, I don't know why I almost fell for betting uh, her. I know you did. You you were bad, so bet, bad. betting on the the divorce uh, being the motivator. But uh, what, the truth is that she just her takedowns are horrendous, man. And she just can't get people to the ground. If you're a jiu-jitsu guy, or gal in this case, and you can't take people down, then you're basically just a, a, a sheep being led to slaughter. Because you're fighting someone like Jessica Andras, and she's just going to fucking eventually crack you with some bomb, and it's just not going to go well. This this looked ugly, Ty. This was a one of the oh. worst performances from her I can remember uh, in a little bit, it seems. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because she actually hurt Andrade at one point. Yeah, at the very end, she hurt her, and then that's when she got hurt the most. She got knocked down four times, and if you look at the strike disparity, uh, it was fifty three uh, for Andrade, forty nine for Dern, um, which is not much. And Dern threw seven more than sh- than Andrade did, so the percentages were kind of close. Um, Andrade went to the legs a lot, yeah, a lot, and that th- that that mattered. Um, Mackenzie Dern was throwing these like spinning back fist punches with you know without the spinning motion, so it was just like straight hammer fist standing up. I guess is how you'd explain it. It was ugly. She was spinning and you know just just doing shit that is not 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 only is it not going to work, it just looks bad, right? It looks like you don't know what you're doing in there, and she didn't. She didn't know what she was doing, right? She couldn't get the fight to the ground. There was one little minor scramble where she I thought she could have uh, got the back or got an arm bar or that's what she wanted to do but Andrade got right up and uh yeah I mean just m- more power <laughs> better striking all around and Mackenzie Dern again I mean I know she's working with Jason Perillo who I think was a uh, kind of um took Bisping to the next level with his striking but I don't think there's much you can do like I don't think there's you know it's kind of like Anthony Joshua going from trainer to trainer uh or same with Ryan Garcia you know if you if you have a, a weakness like both of those guys, and they're very chinny. 
they don't like getting hit. Mackenzie Dern just can't hit and can't kind of formulate strike. And she has power is the, is the thing. Yeah. Like she can equalize people. She gets, she, she smoked Angela Hill. So maybe, you know, she's definitely past the, the certain level she was on before where she couldn't, you know, advance. Now she's at a point where she can't advance to the elite level or even the very good level. Cause this was, this was both. So I didn't know Andrade was also going through a divorce. Yeah. And, and this was her fifth fight in the calendar year, which is crazy. Uh, which we'll talk about loopy later on. She made history also. Um, and I, it just didn't matter, man. Her, her striking is just a mess. It's, it, it's just everything part. Her game is just a mess. She can't get it to the ground. That's the only part of her game that is even good. It's elite, but that's all that's, she can't do anything else anywhere else. She doesn't, she doesn't really do anything in the clinch. She can't wrestle for shit. She can't get a takedown. She, you know, she's very sloppy and, uh, she's sloppy offensively and defensively on the feet. Um, so I don't know, man, I don't know what you do. She's kind of like a, a worse version of Amanda Hebos or something like that. It seems because at least Amanda Hebos has some hands, but I don't know. I don't know what Dern, I don't know what's next for her. Honestly, it, it seems like she's like the more respected version of Crone Gracie. Like it, it's where she wind, like when fights are bad for him, he winds up just flailing around on his back and kind of just, hoping that somebody enters his guard. I think the problem with Mackenzie Dern is that nobody respects her on the feet. So those takedowns that maybe are usually there for her in the gym or whatever are never there because people just stand and are just waiting for that takedown to come. She had, I mean, has, when is the last time she's actually, like you said, she like rocked on draws a little bit, but it wasn't even, it wasn't enough to really make a difference here. I, I don't know. I just, every time I watch her fight, it is so predictable what's going to happen and you have to get lucky to get the submission off that she is lo- hunting the entire time if she can't be jessica andraj ty I-, I don't know i i, I just yeah especially at this point and the jessica andraj experience it's she's still dangerous she always will be she is built crazy she's powerful as shit she's kind of well-rounded and good in all facets but this is a girl who just got eliminated three times in a row and she was at the yeah. lowest of lows, and you you got eliminated by her. So, uh, you know, when you look at uh, Mackenzie Dern's wins against Angela Hill, Tisha Torres, Nina Nunes, I mean, these really aren't uh, world-beating names. So, like you said, maybe she's just kind of somebody who's on that second level, not on that upper echelon. She can't really push her way through to the next level. It's kind of – she's just stuck. And I don't know what she does to get out of this little rut. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know either. Yeah, it's, she, you know, she's not young. I mean, she's not old, but it's kind of do or die. It's kind of you know time to really show the improvements you've made. She hasn't, you know, her takedown accuracy went from eight to fifteen. That's that's the improvement she's made. So, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know what you do with her next. You know, she she can probably beat Angela Hills of the world, but maybe yeah. she will also, come out with a new accent next time. She's. <laughs> She's 0-1 in the post-accent era, so maybe she should uh, switch to like a Polish accent. That would be kind of crazy. That would be wild. That would be a wild <laughs> update. Or she could change it to a French accent, because apparently that works for this next man we are going to talk about. The God of War, Ty. <laughs> Cash us out again. You didn't take it. Coward. You cowered it out. BSD. Head kick. Finish of Matt Frivola. Split his, his ass wide open with that elbow on the ground, too. It was um, it was not it, it was an ugly night for the steamroller Matt Frivola and BSD getting it done again. He wants Dustin Poirier now. He'd beat the fuck out of Dustin Poirier. No, I, I don't know honestly. I'm just saying, uh, stock is at an all time high for our boy, the God of War. Yeah, it didn't take much. Uh, he didn't even land that fucking head kick. Like you know, imagine if he landed it flush. Oh. That guy's head would have been in the 15th row. I love the call out of Justin Gaethje since he was there. He even doubled down on it. Um, his English, very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, I also, my roommate before this fight was like, Hey, this guy's a French special forces. You should bet on him. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sold. That's all you got to tell me. Yep. Um, usually works. He's a savage. I don't know what else to say. Uh, he's going to keep climbing the, climbing the ladder. And I think he's going to keep putting people out. <laughs> I mean, I think being, know, we, getting we, ranked we, is next, right? Uh, it's, is he ranked yet? I mean, Matt Favola was 14. Be. They I, didn't update them yet. That'll happen tomorrow, yeah. but. He's better than Drew Dober and, and Frivola, and he's right there with Moicano, Bobby Green. He should be ranked. Yeah, he should definitely be. I mean, 
why would you not put him in the top 10? Rafael Dos Anjos is 10. You know? Exactly. So, um, I think maybe next, if you want to kind of keep fucking over Matus Scamrot, you give him BSD. And then if you say, okay, that listen, would be awesome. Down, if you shut down the BSD train, then we'll give you your title shot or whatever the fuck. I mean, 155 is just a weird division right now. We have Islam and Charles running it back. I, I really hope, I'm really hoping that it just happens out of left field and Justin Connor gets made, BMF, UFC, UFC 300, all the fucking mon- money in the world, right? They're both going to cash out. Yeah. Dustin Poirier makes some more hot sauce. That's fine. I'm, that, he, I don't really care. Um, maybe, yeah, like maybe maybe Dustin Chandler. Sure, have them fight. I don't care. And then you have Gamrot BSD. I think that would be awesome. I think that would just – even Fiz- Fiziev uh, or Dan Hooker. I think Dan Hooker has a fight coming up. But if you give BSD a top 10, top 15 matchup, uh, really top 10 because, again, like you said, Bobby Green and Dan Hooker, right? They have that. So I think then you slide BSD with like Jalen Turner, maybe, yeah. or, uh, or or Fiziev or Gamrot. I'm all in. I'm all in. I don't know how you could not be all in. I think BSD has what? Let's see if I could uh, bring myself back to where I was. Is it five or six stoppages in a row, right? I believe so. Yeah, what? he's what? Five, yeah, five. Yeah. So five finishes in a row, that has to be close to a UFC record. I thought I saw a, a stat or a graphic, but I'm not sure. I thought the record might have been six. Six stoppages in a row is a record. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this guy's a killer. He had an amazing post-fight speech. He took the mic and pretty much said everything I, you know, he wanted to. He, ch- he called out all the top guys, all the vets. Um, and his English is great. He's a funny. He's just a fucking. He just seems like a great guy. Hell yeah, um, dude. Scary, also. You know, you don't want to be on his bad side. So we are OG day one BSD fans. Even when he got his ass beat, we said, "Yo, the fact that he didn't even go down." That was when he didn't I go became down. A fan. To the ground. He didn't get knocked down. He just stayed standing the whole time. That's crazy. I, so. I think he took. Yeah. Didn't he take that on short notice? He was up 15 pounds from his normal weight class. Fighting Zaleski yeah. Dos Santos, who is an absolute savage. And that's a big jump to 170. I know BSD is a big big boy, but that's a jump from 155 to 170. We talk about that. How much of a. Like, that is That seems like the worst jump of the, of the bunch. To make that jump from 55 to 70 is huge. The 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 stature of the guys that are fighting at that weight class is so much different than what is going on. If guys like, you know, Connor and people like that can fight at 55, but then they go up at 70 and try to fight an actual 70 or and guys like Usman are getting in there, you're like, "Okay, this yeah. is a little bit of a different ball game up here." But uh BSD, man. It, it, you BSD really... almost won that third round, right? Against Zaleski after he got yes. torched in the second. Didn't he almost come back and win that? He was like, not he the played, fight, but the yeah, like he was like putting up a fight with his. It looked like his. He got hit by two sledgehammers on both sides of his face. He was just like the god of war, dude. He, he was not ready that's, to give that L up. God of war. He he took he took an L too. So you know he's learned his durability, his cardio. We we know a lot about him, even though we don't know a lot about him. If that makes sense, uh, he's still very young, which is crazy. So if he's gonna keep hacksawing through these fucking guys like it's nothing. Quickly too. He he does not. You know he wants to get in there, get a check, get a violent finish, and get the fuck out of there, and uh, run up the next one. So I can't wait. I know you can't wait. We can't wait to see what he does next. Hopefully he comes to a a venue near one of us, and we can go see him. I just hope they give him a fight, uh, like a real good one now, because he just showed like Frivola was on a run, and he he yeah, halted that shit yeah. immediately. Yeah, like even if it's somebody like that, like because. Because BSD is not just a stand up and bang kind of guy. Like we, it, you would think that because he's fighting all these different, he's finishing all these fights. You know, three of them have been subs, I'm pretty sure, and two have been knockouts. Or it's you know, it's like right down the middle, uh, either way. So, uh, he is a well rounded mixed martial artist. I'd like to see him use it the next time, and maybe he gets into a fight with like you said a Saruki, and he gets taken down, and oh, uh, he gets back up, he locks in a guillotine, he throws up a triangle, anything. You know, like he's. I mean, dude, to run through Ismail Bonfim, Tiago Moises, Matt Frivola, back to back to back at, at age 26 and 27, uh, that's impressive, man. Yeah, that man. is impressive. Those, those are three quality, solid UFC fighters that will fight for a while in this organization. Um, may, we'll see about Ismail, but at the time, there was a lot of hype. Yeah. It smoked them. You know, all early, too. The Moises one was a little bit drawn out, but that's a tough matchup, and he went to the ground with him, took him down, and just platinum so 
Yeah, he's he's dangerous from all angles, and yeah, I'm sure you know he's not the easiest, he's not the hardest one that you know you can hit him. You can hit BSD for sure, but I don't know if it matters. <laughs> that's the that's the problem with fighting him. It, we're just not sure if it really matters at the end of the day when you land Crazy. your cleanest punch against this guy. But how about this one? Diego Lopez made us look silly. I, I my instinct was to bet Diego Lopez because I kind of felt something like this could happen, but I just thought that. You, you kind of convinced me, and I thought you were right, that Pat Sabatini would be able to get this guy to the ground and kind of smother him a little bit. But it really just – he was not never able to really get out of neutral here. And Pat does not take a shot well. It's what I've learned through these last couple of uh, fights. You know, this Damon Jackson and uh, now Diego Lopez have gotten him out of there and they combined two minutes and 39 seconds. So it's kind of a – Real killer be killed mentality here for Pat Sabatini, but what a great win for Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez kind of showing that he is legit, and he is for real. He is a big guy for 145. He's 5'11", 72-inch uh, reach. He was three inches bigger than Pat Sabatini, but uh, what a win for Diego Lopez. I don't want to act like this is all like you know anti-Pat thing. This is, It's not, not the case at all. Diego Lopez is for real. I just I don't know I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean I, I've been a Diego Lopez guy from the beginning. I had him over Gavin Tucker. I had him by sub over Gavin Tucker, and that was easy work. And I had Jamal Emmers over Pat Sabatini in a fight that he just threw away. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to Jamal Emmers early uh, later as he made th- he did what he was supposed to do. And what he yeah, he did. Doing. Um, <laughs> against your boy, the menace. Yeah, he and he nervous. man, he just threw away that Sabatini first round knockout. He just threw it away. Um. And I saw that, and I, I used to. I remember I kept giving you shit because that's your boy, that's your Philly guy. I'm like, nah, Sabatini's not that good. And then this fight, I was like, nah, I'm gonna plant my flag on the Sabatini hill. And I don't know what I was doing because he, dude, just the way he gets hit and the way he gets dropped and kind of, you know, when Diego Lopez kind of threw him uh, after he hurt him, yeah. And then he got back up and he just fucking knocked him down against the cage. And then he had him like he was hitting him with the ground and pound where his head's just kind of bobbling. You're like, dude, this is not good, not a good look. Good stoppage. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, hop in there a little sooner there. Uh, Keith, is that Keith Peterson? Yep. Yeah, Alcohol Jesus. He must, he, must hate, he must hate Philly guys. Probably. Uh, and Pat's not, Pat's not young, right? I think he's 32, 33. 33, so. now, I believe, yeah. Yeah, the durability is always going to be an issue with him, and it's obviously not going to get better with age. And Diego Lopez, he's a killer, man. He is a killer of 145 or 155. doesn't matter. I think he is uh, must-see TV. I know, the, obviously, the, the Evloev and the Joe Anderson Brito L's Weren't great, but man, those are two those are two really good young fighters that he also had moments of success against. He's just a wild card. He's kind of like a you know, we'll give up position. He's a submission over position guy, but he's gonna win a lot of fights in the UFC for sure. I mean so Yeah, he's gonna be an exciting thing. Like you said, I don't know how far necessarily championship route this might go. You know, I'm not gonna yeah. act like he's you know, now I'm convinced that he's gonna win he's gonna be a title contender, but it's uh, his game is dangerous, and like I don't know how like we, we kind of talked about this a little bit before off air. Just don't know how long this guy's gonna be able to make forty five. I, I don't know if that's a long term kind of thing. I, I mean, he's still young. He's, I mean, but he's not you know young young. He's twenty eight. He's seems like he looks good, and we haven't really seen him necessarily get pushed other than the, the Evil Ev fight, and he looked great in that, especially in the, in the third round. So I don't. I really don't know. He's with a bunch I, of great. He's with a bunch of savages. Yeah, Alexa Grasso and all them. So I think he trains Loopy and her her hands. You know, keep getting better. So seems like sky's the um, limit for Diego. Yeah, we're here. We are here. Also, he got fifty k. So shout out to him. Shout out to him. We will not fade you again. I am vowing that right now that Diego Lopez is on the non fade list. So that's a the tail big list, time if you will. yeah the tail list could argue it could arguably be the tail list uh how about Steve, how about astro boy he, he, <laughs> astro boy almost got sent into the astro world the, during this fight but steve Ursag <laughs> kind of showed that he has a little bit of uh grit and t- tenacity to him he kind of showed that in his last fight too but all in all Ty, this fight was kind of boring it really we really didn't i didn't get all that close to my finish so i wasn't really all in on this. Uh, we we were close. No, not really. You know. So it was. Yeah. I don't yeah, really. Not, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Alessandro Costa either. So I kind of just was like, okay, yeah. let's let's get to the main card already. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Ursa did what he had to do in the third round to secure the victory after 
I think he lost. He won the first, lost the second, and then got the third. I think pretty much won the third with uh, that he had uh, uh, three and a half, three and a half minutes of control. He was just sitting up against um, the cage a lot of this fight too. Like it was, yeah, it, it wasn't great. Uh, Robin Aaron though, he did what he needed to do to get the win <laughs> um, and secure it for the uh, the Tullys, if you will. Wow, bringing the bring, um, bringing the win back to the Vale. Good for them, man. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, he's 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 gonna win some fights at flyweight because I think there are some guys that he can use that that frame against. And uh, the way he fights, I I don't think he's that hard to hit. I think he does obviously have that tall man defense, but he seems like he's tough, right? He seems kind of yeah. tough. And also, he's a guy who I think, if I remember correctly, only has about 10, 11 pro fights. Let's see, twelve. Yeah, he's eleven to one. Yeah, and he's only twenty eight. So I think we're, he's gonna he. As he gets older, maybe he has to move up to 135, but I think we're going to see some jumps from from him, some improvements from him. Um, but we'll see. I mean, maybe his ceiling's a little limited at, at 125. I think most fighters are limited at 125. I, you know, you're, you're going to have a flash of success, and then that's pretty much it. We've seen that with all the flyweight champions before. But uh, Alessandro Costa is tough. You know, he's definitely tough, and he's pretty well rounded. But he's not great at everything, but still tough to deal with and. Uh, was this on late notice or no? I thought maybe one of it. Alessandro Costa round. was on late notice. Yeah, and I think we could kind of tell in that third round. You know, he it, it was crazy. He won the second. I thought he was pretty much just going to kind of roll over if he didn't get an early finish. But he fought well. I mean, they both fought their heart out. Obviously, it was a little boring. Um, yeah, it was. But, again, but he did what he had to do. Kind of have to, you know. We had a better flyweight fight earlier in the night. But yeah, those yeah. guys are also small and just fucking... South American savages. Steve Ersig was supposed to fight Matt Schnell, so he would have definitely eliminated him from the face of the earth. <laughs> they should just run that back, honestly. Why not? Uh, how about Loopy getting a split, a razor thin split decision? I thought this really could have gone either way. I didn't. I didn't have a confident feeling going into the cards being red. Uh, I had Loopy decision on this a plus one fifteen, which was a hit, but did not definitely did not feel good about it, Ty. This. Uh, uh, I didn't leave this thinking that Loopy has the greatest hands in the world. If you're getting so chipped up she, by Tabitha a little bit, I thought she knocked Tab, uh, Tabitha Ricci down in the round, in the first round. Did she not? I thought she knocked I her thought, butt. And then she got hit. At yeah, the very she end got of the round, hit. Right? Yeah, I don't like. I feel like Loopy was like almost getting knocked out at down. the end of the both uh, the first two rounds. I was round like, two, yeah. But I thought one of them got a knockdown. There's nobody got. Credit it with one, but I have to go maybe back and just, rewatch it. Maybe maybe both they hurt call each it other. a slip or something like that. I don't know. It felt like yeah. it at the end. It was like uh, every time I was like, "Oh, we won that round." And then she would like uh, get knocked down. I'm like, "What the fuck, dude?" Like, yeah. Um, I'll say I think Loopy did a, a good job of closing out the champion uh, the championship, the third round, the final round. But we got to talk about the the thirty twenty seven Ricci scorecard. Insane. Brian Miner, what are, what are you doing, bro? Also, Brian Miner gave Mackenzie Dern the first round. How? Uh, maybe he shouldn't be doing this. That, yeah. I wish they would have like a, uh, is there like a website where they track all these guys' scorecards? I really feel like they should. I think on, um, what's the one, uh, what's the one site? UFC scorecards. It's like, um, like they should have, like, you be able to click a judge and you go through like all of his M- scorecards. Yeah. Like, and you're like, wow, MMA decisions. sucks. MMA decisions, you can do that. I'm going to okay. see if I can do that with Mr. Brian Miner. He had three tonight, or that night, that were bad, I believe. He didn't give Nazem Sadikov a 10-8, which was uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what else he had. It looks like not, I don't, I don't know if any of his – he does He does PFL. He's, he seems like he's very active in Bellator and PFL. Uh, so maybe he should just stay there, honestly. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I would hope so, especially if you thought Richie won all three three of these rounds, because that's what some of the people at, at the party I was at were using as an example of why this, you know, Richie got robbed. I'm like, well, that guy's just a moron. Like, I, I don't. Yeah, that guy's dumb. I don't maybe think it should have been 29, 28 all around. Yeah, you know like that's fine. I would be able to live with a, a 29, 28 Richie round, but or Richie card. It's like I said, I thought it could have gone either way, but 30, 27 is just. Blasphemous! It's absolute. Yeah. Um, it's moronic. It's all of those words that you could ever imagine. So, yeah, he should be the one who gets drug tested. I saw a player yeah. on the Colts got drug tested before he even left Germany. Shot they, out. They wasted no time. They said, "Here you go, brother. Take this. You have to piss in this cup." Maybe they should. Uh, maybe they should do that to Mister Brian Miner. I don't know. It wouldn't hurt. Uh, you know what else wouldn't hurt or does hurt actually is Roosevelt Roberts' uh, right arm because uh, Matus Rembecki yeah. uh, put that shit in an arm bar and almost snapped it off. 
I was two minutes away from getting to that second round uh, for for me, but I wound up taking a, a sub bet for him. Just I wish I should have just taken on this card, but I was hunting down the field and thought that Roosevelt was going to kind of hold his own till you know at least the second round, but it just did not nope. go well. I don't he know if Roosevelt right should it, so. be in the. I mean, this is a tough first matchup to kind of get in there with, and he and he missed weight, yeah. right? He missed weight, but I think they forgave it because it was such short notice. Okay, uh, but I mean, listen. He got a, he had a shot in the UFC before, and he, he was losing to Kevin Kroom, right? So they cut him. Then he comes back for this ultimate fighter sham of a season, um, and he loses wow. to Austin Hubbard. Uh, and then he gets another chance. So I'm kind of I mean, he's getting so many chances, kind of confused. But um, I, I, next time they should just give him a layup. I don't know what would be considered a layup for him at 155, but somebody who can't grapple and somebody who can't strike. How about that? Bring back Kevin Kroom. Um, Rematch. Is that did they fight? They did, didn't they? Yeah, Kevin Kroon beat him, but it got overturned because Kevin Kroon was, uh, I think, think tested positive. Yeah, tested positive for bull cum in his uh, blood. (laughs) First time they ever seen that. They didn't, they didn't know what how that got there. So, uh, yeah, listen, good win for Matus. I'd like to see him matched up with somebody that can kind of is on his level because it seems like these first three UFC fights have not really been guys that are necessarily on his level. Uh, I don't know. If uh, the Tajik Eagle would have been on his level, I think that would have been at least more uh, like fun to watch. That guy's nine and zero. You know that would have had at least a little bit of hype behind it to kind of see what these two prospects, you know, where they're at. But uh, I, yeah, I need to see uh, Matus against somebody who's more on his level. So yeah, for sure. How about Sadikov, v- Vyacheslav Boroshev? with the old Slava claws? They got to do the dance afterwards. Little Sadikov, I don't like him. Let me just say that. This guy is just – he gives me vibes of I'm happy to be here for the mo- for the most part uh, in some of these fights. He should have won this fight, but he kind of just kept doing dumb shit over and over again. It, it felt like maybe if I rewatch it, I'll feel differently. But I remember sitting there watching that uh, uh, on the spot, and I had not had uh, – I think I maybe have drank one beer by the time that this had uh, this fight had happened. So my, my judgment was clear. It was not clouded. And uh, Sadikov really just kind of, I don't know, was it, he wasn't going, I, 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 I just, I felt like there were opportunities to get this man out of here, especially with that, he rocked him, I think it was that in the second round, right? Yeah, he, Where he, he had him. Listen, if, if this was up, if this was up to Brian Minor, he would have lost. So, yeah. Uh, but if it was up to us, he would have won. I don't know how he did, you know, after what he did in that second round, he outstruck him 51 to 30, um, knocked him down once and hurt him pretty much. Uh, every time he landed, like yeah. you know, Borshev was 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 was. I mean, that fucking guy will not die. I mean, it was crazy. He got cut open so badly. That cut was brutal. He was gushing blood right away. It didn't oh, that's matter. Who was, that's so, who I was talking about with that elbow on the ground where he just got yeah, split open. Steals the third round. You cannot lose that third round after you had such no. a great second round. And it's not like it was a cardio dump at all at all or anything because Sadikov landed some shots in the in the second round, um, more or in the third more than he landed in the first. The first round he wasn't doing anything. He was just taking. You know, straight shots and Borchev was winning every boxing exchange. But to lose that third round, like, you can't lose that round, man. You get, you have to rally. Not even rally. It's it, you have all the momentum. You just ten eight to the guy. You, you got to get him out of there, uh, or at least win that third round. So yeah, you can, yeah. I just yeah, disappointing. I I, feel, I kind of feel you. I I just thought that I thought he had avenues to maybe take it to the ground. And even if it's not a sub, I know I bet sub people are probably like you just wanted them to sub. Him. Not even really. Just kind of could have. Ground and pounded it and got him out of there. I, I felt like he also was, couldn't work. It, it was crazy. He couldn't get any grappling like advancements. He couldn't win any grappling. He like he took him down a couple times. And I kept telling my my roommate, I was like, "Listen, if this gets to the ground, Borshev Slava Klaus, we kept calling him. Slava doesn't know what he's doing on the ground. And that's what he did. It was kind of crazy. He made some improvements, or maybe he you know he just ran into a guy in Sadakov who's not uh, that he's still a little raw. Maybe he's not that well polished. Right? Yeah. I think that could be that's probably what it is. Yeah, because he just, you know, inconsistency in the wrestling, inconsistency in the striking, inconsist- inconsistency in his game plan overall. So, yeah, I- I'm right there with you, man. It was a little uh, little disappointing. You know who wasn't disappointing? Uh, maybe for my bet, but not for uh, for the performance. Jared Gordon, man. Jared Flash Gordon got Marco Madsen's bum ass the fuck out of there, okay? Let me just, with all due respect, of course, to Mr. Uh, Overgaard, uh, he, Mr. Olympian, yeah. yeah, Mr. Overgaard really uh, did not look uh, <laughs> like he was UFC level. Uh, he he still ha- hasn't looked like UFC level. He is 
of that um how do I say uh, kind of that Pat Sabatini kind of guy, which not no disrespect to Pat Sabatini. Pat Sabatini is way better than Marco Madsen, but uh, they do not take shots well uh, and their brain. It's not their fault, but their brain just does not respond well. Yeah. This man got hit and his lights went out almost immediately. Uh, fl- flash knockdown on the ground. He got hit a couple more times and it was curse for Marco Madsen. You like that? And uh, there you go. Jared Gordon like with a huge win. He yeah, needed a finish. I mean, yeah, he did. Uh, also, did you hear Dylan Danis call Jared Gordon bum? Okay. He said he would beat him in a fight. Yeah, and then he like, said he'd fight, he would fight Kevin Holland and beat him. I don't know why we're still getting uh, sound bites from him. Like That's what I love about Errol Hawan. He acts like he's a serious journalist, but then he's doing like a yeah. uh, like a fireside like a, chat with that <laughs> fucking guy. You know, He's at like a random comedy club in like, not even LA, but in California talking to Dylan Danis on stage. It's like, what is this? What? What is this? Yeah. What are you doing? Somebody, it was, uh, who was it? I think it was Kevin Holland. He, there was a video uh, on Instagram. Kevin Holland was the top comment. He saw, he said, why are you hanging with the ops? And he tagged Ariel Hawani, which I thought was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big win for Jared Gordon. I mean, the elbow was nasty. The clinch work was nasty. And, you know, Jared Gordon is a, is a dog from Astoria. So, you know, getting a win in his home state, huge for him. And he did not get 50K though. So not that, not that good of a night. Not 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 good enough for the boss, but uh, you know, of the six people that got fifty thousand uh, dollars, seven actually, if you count the fight of the night. So, how about John Castaneda taking out Kung Hyo Kong? Didn't take him out necessarily. He won a decision. It was not really even back and forth. It kind of just. I thought Kong was going to have to get this to the ground. He never really even got close to you know maintaining position on uh, you know just kind of getting anything really started offensively. And Castaneda, I mean, he landed a couple shots here and there, but Castaneda kind of controlled this one throughout, and it was a easy uh, three round decision for him. Did it seem kind of like seem like a sparring match? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, it, it yeah. was not really had no life to it whatsoever. Yeah, and nobody were really pressing the, on the gas, but good on Castaneda for winning pretty much on the feet and on the ground. I thought Kong Kong would have maybe an advantage or maybe a a, a chance to get. Um, a nice moment, you know, whether yeah. it's like a submission attempt or a knockdown or just something, but he didn't have any, anybody. He landed some strikes, you know, uh, 111 to 88 in favor of Castaneda, but, um, yeah, nothing really. Castaneda mixed it up well. He went to the legs, went to the body, went to the head, got some takedowns, got some control. Like he just pretty much did what he had to do to get the win 30, 27 all around. So yeah, you know, not the, the best or most entertaining, but just a solid, solid win in a, in a sport where it's hard to get wins. Did what he had to do. Do not blame the man whatsoever. It was a good win for John Castaneda. Uh, how about Josh Van? Joshua Van, that is, to you people out there. Uh, he takes out Kevin Borjas. Three-round decision as well. This one's a little bit more exciting than uh, the previous one we just talked about. Kind of a back-and-forth affair. Uh, you know, Josh Van getting his offense off, maybe rocking Borjas. Borjas coming back and rocking Josh Van. Uh, lots of body work. There was a lot of uh, good offensive striking going on here. Not really too much grappling. There was a couple of takedowns. I think Josh Van uh, took him last down round, at one right? point. Yeah, in the last round, which was, you know, Josh Van just seems like a, you know, he he's showing that he can be or he will be, you know, a complete uh, mixed martial artist. He's only 22 years old, man. He is 2001. a... He's a scary guy uh, for for all those 25ers, and so is Kevin Boros, man. Boros looked good in this fight as well. It's just two young prospects meeting up here, and it was a really good fight. I was very entertained, even though I didn't win any bets. Very rare when I lose that I'm still heavily entertained. (laughs) Yeah, that was a good fight. Um, Van averaging almost, I think, what was it, nine uh, significant strikes landed per minute. In his UFC career so far, I mean, and he was born a month after 9-11, so well, that's impressive, man, for, you know, especially at flyweight. I think uh, I think he could do, um, he could be a pretty solid contender. He, he seems a little smaller in there. I don't know if Borjas is just big. I think Borjas might be a little bit bigger. But um, I do kind of worry about uh, Van's, I guess, striking defense, right? He gets hit a lot yeah, six times, I was just six times per that. minute. Uh, and he's fought two guys in Zalgas and Borjas who aren't, you know, huge punchers. Borjas has power and he, he's just kind of a little reckless, right? Um, Zalgas does not have power and he landed a lot of strikes. So yeah, giving up seven strikes per minute with, um, you know, all that in the flyweight division, that's not good. It's not good. So 
we'll see how he's going for it. But again, just 22 years old, pretty uh, pretty high floor at least I'll say for him. He didn't move his head at all, dude. That's what that's what I was yeah. noticing in this fight. He does not get off the center line whatsoever. It's just if you throw straight punches at Josh Van, you are going to get to him at some point, and Borjas did. It just it kind of seemed like it took that to get like to get rocked to kind of wake up and realize that I have to move a little bit here. I can't just go, keep going forward and back on a straight line. I kind of got to put in a little left and right in this, and it, it eventually worked out. But I let me say, as much as I love this guy, this kid, he's there's a little bit uh, of concern here for for future matchups. Depending on who he gets sure. uh, matched up with, I I worry it could be a bad one, but. We'll worry about that when we get to it, I guess. How about Jamal Emmers taking out Dennis the Menace early on in this one? Forty with well, Dennis the Great, sorry, not to be confused with Dennis the Menace. Uh, Forty nine seconds, Ty is all took. Just uh, just a a poor poor matchup for Mister Great, and he he ran into a hammer here, and he ran into some hammer fists at the end of the night. But uh, and Jamal Emmers missed on weight. The back of the head. You were right. Bit. Yeah, I called that one. Um, he seems like to have an issue with making weight. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he can do about that, but yeah, he uh, hit him with a beautiful straight right and got him out of there. Just got the finish he needed. He also did not get fifty k, but I guess that'll happen when you miss weight, right? Uh, also, you know, prelim guys kind of get uh, the shit end of the stick, if you will, sometimes. So that was UFC two ninety five, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think it lived up to the hype, Ty. I, th- I enjoyed the fights. You know, you know, I, a majority of them were good and entertaining. So you're not going to hear any complaints from me. Lots of bonuses given out. I don't know if it was because your boy 45 was in the building. I don't know uh, if Dana just felt good about what was going on. How but about that walkout, first off? We got, Don, we got Don Senior, Dana White, uh, and then we got Tucker the Carlson, got Don, Kid Rock, Don Jr. Yeah, it was so it was Kid Rock, Dana, and and uh, and Trump, which is just you know hilarious three. Um, and then you have Don Jr. in the back. I'm like, oh, I thought he was going to jail, but uh, nope, possibly not. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the first person Kid Rock daps up is none other than Jared Leto. And I'm like, what? What are we? What are we doing? What is going on here? I'm like, are we? Where are we at? Are we? We must be. This must. Be, this must be a fever dream. It kind of felt like it. Um, a lot of people were in attendance. Those guys, the way they walked out, it was so weird because like the camera panned to the tunnel and then they're walking out. And I'm like, oh, this, this is what is we're this doing. The, un- the unofficial, official, uh, you know, main card introductory thing that we're doing. Uh, it was, it was honestly kind of funny. I didn't expect it at all, and it was kind of like WWE, like before the main match starts. Here we go. We got everybody walking. You're like, okay, Vince McMahon's walking out to the ring with fucking whoever the fuck. It was crazy. It was crazy, but kind of funny. And I love obviously it. everybody. Everybody loved it there. Yeah, I love when when uh, people were knocking people out and they're jumping in his face, and he's like, "You're you're a great fighter. You're a great job." And every time they show them on screen, he go, "Thank you, thank you." Like, <laughs> yeah, come. <laughs> oh, Bill Burr's wife flipped them off. I, yeah. that, that happened. Just so um, ridiculous. So- all of it. He's sitting cage like right on the cage too. Not like he doesn't have like a regular seat with regular people. No, he's sitting on the cage. You can see him Adelaide every Bur- time the camera panned. Adelaide Bird's like, "Yo, get out of the way, forty-five. I can't fucking see." Yeah, well, we'd rather her not see and kind of just judge the fight off uh, vibes because yeah. she's not good when she sees the fight. So, forty-five is probably a better judge than Brian Monner. For all, for being I serious. mean, probably. You know, I don't know though. I'd be like, "This man's a great man. He won Kobe. he probably be, he'll probably be there for the Colby one." Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how about uh, 50K for Alex Pereira? Uh, 50K for Aspinall? 50K for Andrade? 50K for Saint Denis? 50K for Diego Lopez? So if you knocked anyone out or even won your fight on the uh, main card, well, everyone knocked the, the guy out on the main card. No money for Andrade, though. No, she got, she got 50. Oh, I'm seeing sorry. on Tapology. Yeah. Uh, 50, 50, 50, 50. So that's a uh, quarter of a million dollars given out to the main card. And then fight of the night, Sadiq Avin Borishev, Slava Claus, is able to scrounge up 50K from coming back from the dead. And, uh, you know, not winning, but forcing the draw, which is a kind of a win, honestly, if you think about it. So that is UFC 295. We got a card coming up next week. I believe, are we back at the Apex? I think we are. 
I think we, we always got to go back to the eight packs, right? We gotta, you know. This is a two in the yep. afternoon card. This is yeah, this, a this absolute trash bin of of of, of a <laughs> card. This is a fourteen fight card, and we will go I think thirteen with, now. Is it? Did we lose somebody? I, I would I think, be surprised. I by think that. the the four and oh, Caesar Almeida. Uh, will no longer be fighting Christian Leroy Duncan. I think he was probably going to get smoked anyway, but it looks like that's not going to happen. Maybe somebody else can drop out. Maybe in Peyton Talbot or something. Yeah, well, I mean, the main card has Eurus Medich and uh, Johnny Parsons on there, so it's there's a lot of filth. Chase Hooper's fighting Jordan Levitt, so you know we're going to have big cakes versus no cakes. It's going to be yeah, and Michael Morales and Jake Matthews. We kind of talked about this last time, so we're not going to wait too much that's time. That's a good fight on this uh, whole car. But Brendan Allen and Paul Craig is a disgusting, uh, in a bad way, yeah. main event. <laughs> and I don't even know if I'll watch any of these fights live, to be honest. Uh, this seems like a, I'll go back on, you know, Sunday night, and, you know, after football's <laughs> over and just, you know, br- breeze through this and kind of watch it. I, I, I really, I, I think it's that bad of a card. It, it's just. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, when, when Mick Maynard says, yeah, we don't, we don't put up bad cards. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, I point I, you I to this you, one. I point you to some of the other ones. Raquel Pennington yeah. is the main event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did get some news. Dominic Reyes, Carlos Olberg, baby, two ninety seven in Toronto. Uh, man, they don't. They don't. They, they don't love. Uh, they don't love Dominic Reyes, do they? They give him tough, tough, sh- uh, tough fights. Carlos Olberg hits hard. I think if, as soon as he hits Dom Reyes, he's going to sleep. We saw what Ryan Span do him did to him. And Ryan Span's not good, so. Jan Blahovic, Alexander Rakic, also that's a big fight for Rakic. If he can win that, he's is that that I mean, day right too? there. Yeah, that's a two. Yeah, the same card, uh, two ninety seven in Toronto. So, um, yeah, um, we have. Did you see Jan Blahovic? Is uh, he was talking shit to Alex Pereira, saying he's a sl- he's a slime ball and all this shit <laughs> after he called out Izzy after the win. Yeah, listen, Jan Blahovic can just yeah. I love Take how Jan acted like bit. he was like so noble in his loss to uh, Ankalaev, but now it's like the when he left there and they were like, "Dude, you it's not uh, you can't just be like the good guy." He's like, "Oh, okay, yeah. fuck you, you slime ball. <laughs> you're a, you're a piece of shit. Come fight me, pussy." It's like, "Oh, whoa, all right, Jan, let's relax a little bit. <laughs> we went a little too far, you know, fucking uh, left here, but." Uh, yeah, I don't really care for anything that Jan Blahovic has to do. I hope yeah, Rockets let's... wins that so we can get him the fuck out of here. To be honest, but. Uh, is there any? I guess we'll have a. Uh, what, when do you leave for? Uh, the plan would be to leave for Saturday afternoon. Okay, so we we could knock Saturday a pot morning. out. Though I was just making sure that yeah, we, could. we could. Maybe I, we can talk on the plane. Maybe I can That'd land at a wild. local barbecue joint and uh, maybe give you a review. That would be Ask nice. Some people around there who their favorite local Kansas City fighter is. I'm sure a lot of people say James Krause, but I'm not he sure after the scandal. He's blackballed. Yeah. <laughs> We don't. Yeah, his name does not exist. So maybe they'll say, um, "Who's your favorite? Oh, who ga- who's City? your favorite MMA guy who gives you picks?" James Krause. Uh, I wonder if he's <laughs> where. What happened to him? Like, is he like? Uh, he's off the grid. Yeah, like Here's. he just kind of disappeared. I, I think you should get the Discord going if they're gonna get you out of here. You know, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't run the Discord again. Uh, it's you were making people bet, some money, so, man. Help us out. Help let's, everyone let's, out. Can, let's. Come on this pod, and we'll see what you like, and we'll fade you. We'll win money, and we'll be smart. Yeah, you know? well, we're not going to fade him, though, because it seemed like, it, it, especially <laughs> any of those guys a, that were fighting in his gym, the pulse, he had right? the picks. Yeah, he had them picks, <laughs> dude. But, well, maybe get Zach Cummings. Maybe I can run him down. He's a Kansas City guy. I think um, also um, Tim Elliott. I think he's a local Missourian. So maybe I can uh, run some of those guys down, see what they got, get them on the pod. Who knows? Also, we, we did have... Game bred bare knuckle MMA, a main event. Roy Nelson was the underdog. Almost got it done against Alan Belcher. But he lost a split. Alan Belcher is now the inaugural heavyweight champion of game bred MMA, bare knuckle MMA. May I add, Randy Costa also. I mean, he did illegal things to Jason Knight. It was bad. He beat Jason Knight up for a minute and forty one seconds. That was pretty brutal. Jason Knight. I mean, you know, if it, he's only thirty one, if he lives to thirty five, I'd be surprised. But um. Chase Sherman, huge W. He uh, he beat the shit out of some poor fella. Um, Brandon Davis got a win. Curtis Millinder back in the win column. That's huge for him. Joshua Weems somehow gets submitted. So that happened. At BKFC? Uh, BK, BK MMA. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Francisco Trinaldo beat Sasha Polonikov after he just randomly tears his ACL. Uh, Hector Lombard back in the win column. 
So uh, pretty good night for some guys. And I didn't want—I well, didn't see a punch thrown from that event. I will. Be yeah. Too, so <laughs> it, it was in Mississippi. So you'd be surprised that they probably don't drug test. So I'm sure Hector Lombard was on all the Flintstone gummies. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Eddie Alvarez looked like he was on every single Flintstone gummy that's ever been created before. You know, they're throwing body shots at Mike Perry. That was so. wild. At first, I was like, "This is funny," and then they kept going. I was like, "All right, let's let's." You know, yeah, Mike that guy Perry Dave Feldman to... has no control over what's going on there <laughs> at all. He's no Dana White, that's for sure. He kind of just let yeah, it's a wild, a wild west over there. Sean Shelby, yeah, he's just like, all right, guys, just you know, don't stab each other before the fight. Anything else is fine. Shout out to Hunter Campbell doing some of the stare offs this week too, which was wild to see him out there. So yeah, never seen him. Didn't even know what he looked like until I saw him. Yeah. Like, Who's this know, guy? Yeah, dwar- getting dwarfed over by these large, <laughs> giant human beings. So uh, it would have happened to me too, brother. It's not nothing. Uh, no, no, uh, no disrespect. So. Ty, this has been the Shoulder Strikes MMA podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hotbox. My name is Matt McSweeney. I am Ty Capone. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure to wash your shoes before you walk in the house.